And we're back for episode three, and this is the big one. We've looked at the ugly, we've looked at the good, let's look at the bad. These are the irredeemable recipes I've come across. I'm not going to try, I'm not even going to try to redeem these. They are so bad, there's no point. That There really isn't. Let's take a look at what I've found so far. Here we go. Now mind you, this is just a smattering, a, just a small sample of the really horrific things that I've run across on uh, online in my researches. So we're just going to start off with some tomato slices with uh, sliced banana on them. Why would you do this? Uh, I, I'm having a hard time imagining these would taste good together. And there's no real redeeming this because what, why would you do it? I, I just don't know. So tiger, tiger ice cream. Um, this isn't really a recipe. Obviously this is actually a product that they sold. I just included it because I ran across it and, and thought it was noteworthy. Um, they had orange ice cream. Sure. Um, I'd go for sherbet, but whatever. But, uh, they said, well, we want to make it tiger stripe. So we need something black. I know let's add licorice. Ah, I've never seen this before. I have no idea if it would taste any good. I'm not a big fan of black licorice to begin with. Um, it, it's got its place, you know, anise flavored things, uh, um, ouzo, um, Rocky, uh, you know, those, those sorts of things. Absinthe has, has that sort of a, a black licorice flavor to it. It has its place. And in, when I'm in the right mood, sure, great. But mixed with orange ice cream, I'm having a hard time imagining this would be any good at all. Little Rubies. Beautiful holiday fondue is what they call it. It's not really a fondue. So basically you're taking a bunch of hot dogs, cutting them into bite-sized pieces. Or if you have like uh, little wieners or little smokies, you can just dump those in the pan with cherry pie filling and either uh, thin that down with rosé wine or a quarter cup each of sugar and orange juice. And heat until warm, hold in a chafing dish, and enjoy. Um, it might not taste bad exactly. I mean, you know, sweet and cherry pot, cherry pie filling. Um, it'll sort of coat the hot dogs uh, or little smokies with this this cherry pie filling and this this red goo. Um, it's just ugh. Uh, probably sickly sweet, um, a disturbing color, <laughs> uh, served hot. I, eh. there are easier, e easier ways of doing, you know, uh, hors d'oeuvres without making radioactive hot dog pieces. I, ugh. Ah, uh, yes. Sardine stuffed lemons. And that's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. You have sardines, a little bit of salt and pepper, some grated horseradish, um, and a little bit of lemon juice. Some of the lemon juice that you get from actually hollowing out these lemons, um, you, you juice them, but you add just a little bit of it. Um, mash that all together and then stir with softened gelatin so that it you know becomes a thick goop. Um and then cram them back into the hollowed out lemon shells, lemon halves, and serve with bread and butter. Why? Uh, to our modern taste, not everybody really likes sardines to begin with. Uh, I do, but um, yeah, just it, it, just making this 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 sardine paste. Um, why bother going through all the trouble of putting it into hollowed out lemons, it doesn't really look that great. And if you put it into a nice bowl and served it with the bread or crackers or something to, to dip it into, um, or, you know, something you, you'd spread it, something to spread it onto, you don't need the presentation. Um, it's not really all that great. It's actually kind of gross. Uh, you don't need to... Thicken it with gelatin. Just have the sardines. If you're actually going to serve sardines as an hors d'oeuvre, and again, that's a very specific crowd that you'd be serving those to. Um, I uh, hard pass. 
some of the worst offenders of these vintage recipes, uh, you'll notice, <laughs> uh, involve gelatin. People really loved suspending things in aspic, and there's no reason to do it. They're, it's just, yeah, grody. So jellied bouillon with frankfurters that's exactly what it is you you take uh, beef bouillon you you make it up and uh you actually mix gelatin into it so that it'll set uh set firmly and uh before it completely sets um when it's still pretty soft you suspend hot dogs hard-boiled eggs and celery into it and and then pour it into pour that mess into a mold uh like a bunt pan and chill until set, and then enjoy. Why would you do this? It, uh, it's, it's definitely very old school. Tastes are very different these days. But even then, that is horrific. Okay, the chicken cranberry party salad is a good example of false advertising, is what I'm going to call it. Because here's the recipe. You take a can of condensed cream of chicken soup, mix it with gelatin, softened gelatin, mayonnaise, and parsley. That is apparently the salad part of this. Then when that's uh, chilled until firm, then you put on top of that uh, a can of cranberry sauce, jellied can cranberry sauce that you've mixed with more gelatin because apparently jellied cranberry sauce isn't jellied enough. Um, pour that on top, chill again, and then unmold. This is not a salad. Uh, the only actual vegetable in this is the parsley. And I guess if you want, you can call the cran cranberry fruit. Um, but it's not a salad. <laughs> they don't even tell you to serve it on top of lettuce uh, so that you can sort of ostensibly call it part of a salad. Aside from that, uh, cream of chicken soup and mayonnaise... Um, Served cold, you know, I mean, the gelatin is probably not going to help any from the fact that you you, ha you haven't really done anything other than just have cream of chicken soup and mayonnaise together with some parsley in it and flavored it with cranberry sauce. That's just gross. Okay, the corned beef luncheon salad. Once again, it's something suspended in gelatin. This time it's canned corned beef with canned peas uh, some acid, got some vinegar, lemon juice, and cabbage, and suspended in a mold, and uh, enjoyed, quote-unquote. Now this, there's, I don't actually have the recipe, it's just mention of it, um, and as they say in this, this one author that's quoted here in the article, uh, the recipe is just wrong in every possible way <laughs> when compared with today's modern tastes and palate. I have to agree, um, I love, I love corned beef, I really do. But, uh, and if I have to, canned corned beef, okay, sure. Um, I've, I've had it. It's certainly not as good as the fresh thing, but if that's all you've got, uh, you're in a survival situation or something, canned corned beef is better than no corned beef. But putting it in a gelatin, calling it a salad uh, with some canned peas, which are going to always, almost always overcooked um, because they have to you know, blast them with 100 million degrees in order to make sure they're safe, uh, safely canned. Um, and, you know, dressed, quote-unquote, dressed with some acid. Uh, bleh, not, not very good. Um, in fact, I would dare to say that this is always going to be bad. Okay, again, even though this time at least they serve it on a lettuce leaf, uh, not a salad, the donut prune salad, where you have pitted prunes, cottage cheese, served on two donuts on a lettuce leaf. <laughs> um, oh, and you serve it with mayonnaise, by the way. Almost forgot that part. Um, I guess because, you know, mayonnaise, they kind of called, they, they sort of treated that like a salad dressing back in the day. Um, they decided they could call this a salad. It's donuts. It's donuts, prunes, and cottage cheese. Uh, those those things, while the cottage cheese maybe goes on a salad, but otherwise, this is not a salad. And they're donuts. <laughs> Why would you do this to a perfectly innocent donut? Ah, uh, yes. The eggs oriental, because 
It's not enough to be disgusting. You also have to be offensive. There's nothing oriental about this recipe. You're taking a canned cream of mushroom soup. It's Heinz brand um, mixed with some, you know, vegetable sauteed in butter. You're adding tomato ketchup and American cheese and Worcestershire sauce. Um, and you finish it off with sliced hard cooked eggs. And the only thing I guess they, that, that makes this oriental, quote unquote, is to serve this over hot chow mein noodles or rice. Um, that's disgusting in so many ways. <laughs> um, first of all, putting cheese on anything oriental and, you know, even supposedly Chinese, um, you know, having the little guys with the bamboo hats and the, and the slanted eyes, that's, that's not offensive at all. Putting ketchup in it, that's, that's real authentic. I, this, ah, uh, I, I'm, I was almost tempted just to make this, just to find out how bad it could be, but I, I don't know how to redeem this while, maintaining the spirit of the recipe while actually making it taste good. Uh, I, I, there's really nothing I could do with this. Ah, uh, the cottage cheese pickle peanut sandwich. I want you to read those words again, and I want you to think about that for a minute. Cottage cheese pickle peanut sandwich. And yes, this is ex that that's exactly what it is, and yet it is even more than what you think it is. Because yes, indeed, it is a sandwich that you make with cottage cheese, sliced dill pickles, and peanut butter. But then you take that sandwich and you dip it in a mixture of milk and egg. And guess what? You pan fry that and turn it into kind of like a Monte Cristo or French toast. Ah, uh, wow. Um, I could say all sorts of things about this. Um, if someone was writing this while pregnant or maybe they had pica and thought this taste, this, this would taste good. I, I don't know. Um, this is sort of one of those Elvis Presley kind of, uh, combinations with his, you know, p fried peanut butter, bacon, and banana sandwiches. Um, uh, I'm afraid to even try this. Uh, honestly, uh, yeah, it just frightens me. Since we're talking about peanut butter, how about peanut butter balls? Which, on the surface, okay, you know, uh, you look at the recipe, uh, butter, flake coconut, powdered sugar... Uh, chopped nuts, vanilla, uh, skip over that last ne next one, peanut butter, graham cracker crumbs, semi-sweet chocolate bits. This sounds pretty good, except for that one ingredient that I mixed, that I, that I skipped over, the food grade paraffin wax. So here's the thing. You basically mix everything together except for the wax and the chocolate. Um, stir them all together. Let them stand for a few minutes. Obviously, the, but the butter's softened. Um, stir them all together. Shape them into balls. On the side, you melt paraffin wax with some, with some chocolate in a saucepan, and then you use that to coat that mixture. And then you place on parchment paper and let the chocolate, the, the coating, uh, set. Um, if it weren't for that part, if it weren't for the wax, for that matter, if you just, if you just dipped it in chocolate, great. But the wax, part of it, the wax is there to, to make sure that there's a nice shiny coat uh, once the chocolate sets. But the other thing, if you note at the top, it says, can also be used as votary candles. Anything that, anything that you intend to actually light on fire, probably not food. Um... And if you ate this, yes, it's food grade paraffin wax. It is technically edible. However, it is not digestible. So you eat enough of these. Well, enough said. Um, they're peanut buttery coconut x lax. <laughs> oh, mustard ring, how I hate thee. Uh, not only is this, you know, yet another gelatin thickened monstrosity, but that's basically what it is it's mustard. Uh, that you've molded into a ring and you put a bunch of raw vegetables in there. So it's not really dippable. You're actually supposed to cut a wedge of this for people 
and uh, let them select some crudite to eat along with yellow mustard suspended in gelatin. Do I need to say any more? Oh, gooey buns, oh, gooey buns, you make me projectile vomit. So, you call this gooey buns. This is, this is supposed to be a gooey bun. That sounds like something yummy that you would bake for breakfast, you know, like sticky buns, um, like cinnamon rolls. They're not. This is bologna. Stay with me here. This is bologna, American cheese, mustard, mayonnaise, and relish that you put into a food processor, grind it into sort of a pate, spread this inside of a buttered hot dog bun, and bake it until it sort of becomes melty. Um... Wow. Uh, and in fact, I, if I remember correctly, this is from the North Country Kitchens cookbook. Um, and the book claims that this dish is great for teenagers. I don't know what teenagers you live with, but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, none of the teenagers I've ever met, or been for that matter, <laughs> um, would uh, be all that excited to be handed this as a snack and or meal. Oh, they're not... There's so many things that you could have done. Uh, you know, how about just make a bologna sandwich? Uh, but actually turning this into a molten hot goo, it's not appetizing. And I don't know that it's... I, I certainly don't think it's any better than just if you took bologna, American cheese, mustard, mayo, and relish and put them on a bun and just said, here's your sandwich. Maybe put some vegetables in there. Uh, some lettuce, some tomato. Uh, I think it would be perfectly, you know, it would be perfectly fine. But turning it into a paste like this, gross. So Vienna sausage shortcake. This is another falsely advertised recipe. So you basically take Vienna sausages, uh, simmer them with cream of chicken soup, some cheese, and some green beans, and then you pour them over cornbread. I really don't know if I need to say anything more about that. Um, <laughs> there's really nowhere I can go with this that would make this any better. Um, I certainly don't think I can do much worse. Here we have bananas wrapped in mackerel. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about that. So this is fish sticks with pineapple. Uh, this honestly probably doesn't really taste as bad as, as I think it does, but it comes down to a question of why you would bother doing it. So you're taking fish sticks and then you're cooking them in a combination of uh, pineapple with the reserve juice, brown sugar, vinegar, soy sauce, ginger, and garlic salt. And uh, you've got diced green peppers and some cornstarch in there. So it's basically teriyaki sauce um but why <laughs> when you've got frozen fish sticks um cooked in what is basically teriyaki sauce uh why would you do this um why not use you know real fish and real teriyaki sauce and you know have something that actually tastes i don't know good Okay, I gave myself the giggles on this one. So this is the Busy Lady Beef Bake. Um, I actually mislabeled this. And I don't know, it, I'm not going to say it was Freudian, but uh, I actually mislabeled the photo as Busty Lady Beef Cake. Uh, <laughs> which uh, just gives me the giggles. But anyway, um, it's still horrible regardless of what you call it. Uh Essentially, you take uh, beef stew, it's Dinty Moore brand beef stew, a couple cans of it, um, into a casserole dish, stir in some frozen peas and onions, uh, in a, onions and cream sauce, which of course is also uh, available from Pillsbury, or was when this recipe came out. Bake the crap out of it, and then uh, you put homemade, homemade cream biscuits on top of it, because you're cooking, apparently, and then bake the crap of it, out of it some more. Um, you're taking a whole bunch of canned products and just dumping them into a pot and uh, calling it cooking. 
it's it, it's probably not horrible. Uh, the the ingredients that you've put in there are, you know, not horribly offensive, but the combination is is just it, it it's to me it's just lazy. Uh, I don't know if it's any good, and I honestly don't want to even try. Uh, one making it, and two. Uh, trying to redeem it because honestly, just have some stew, make some biscuits on the side. Um, this just means that the bottoms of the biscuits will be all soggy. Um, it's not quite a shepherd's pie or anything quite like that. It's just they're not really dumplings either because they're going to be hard and crusty on the top. I, it, there's really nothing good about this. Oh, thank you, Campbell's Soups, for the Triple Play Warmer. This is one of those recipes that came out of the Campbell's Soup cookbook. Um, that's an excellent example of how they came up with recipes that just make you use more of their product than just eat a can of soup. Um, this combines cream of tomato soup with split pea soup and beef broth. Yeah. Not so good. Um, the combination of the, the the split pea with ham and the cream of tomato, it just doesn't really go together. Uh, and when you really, you, you don't even really thin it with water or milk. You just put those two cans together and you thin it with the beef broth, also from Campbell's. Um, it, it, make, it actually just makes my stomach, my stomach turn just thinking about it. What do you think? Were they really irredeemable? Do you have any ideas for how some of these might actually be redeemed? They might actually be good, edible, or at least edible. <laughs> uh, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'd like to thank you for watching this series. Uh, until next time, this is Mike Uyak for Recipe Redemption. Thanks for watching.